I'm up at my alma mater, Clemson University, and I'm speaking with Jim Faust, who's a professor in the Department of Plant and Environmental Sciences and Floriculture yes. is your specialty, and we're coming up on Valentine's Day. And nothing is more exciting than when you go to the store and after you've gotten all the things you're supposed to eat, you come home with the package of flowers, which are so available now. Yes, and everybody loves flowers. Yeah, um, you, you walk out through the parking lot and everybody looks at you and says, wow, you know, those are beautiful. Yes. So, yeah, when you bring them home, the first thing you need to do is put them in water. If you want them to last long, they need to be in water. And then when you really have time to you know, make your bouquet look nice, um, then when you, you know, take them out of the sleeve, you cut the bottom of the stems off. You take about one or two inches off the bottom of every stem. Uh huh. Put them back in the water. That will help with water uptake? Yes, because what happens when you cut the stem, and keep in mind, these were cut probably a week ago Whoa. in South America, and they you know, shipped in, and it's taken some time to get here. An air bubble can actually get into the stem, and that air bubble will block water being taken up through the stem. Okay. So by cutting the stem, you kind of are reintroducing water to the base of the stem. All right, so we've got them home, and if they have any leaves on them that are down low, we're going to remove those as well. Yeah, we'd never want the leaves to be in the water. Okay. Uh, that'll create some bacterial problems. All right, and then they often send you home with a little package, and what is in that package, yeah. and is it good to use it? You should absolutely use it. It's there for a purpose. We just call it flower food, and it will help extend the life, the vase life of that product. So if it naturally lasts five, six, seven days, it'll give you a few extra days. Yeah. And the little package you showed me said it was made down in Walterboro. Yeah. And yeah. although they won't tell you exactly what's in it, you have an idea of what's in sure, it. Sure, sure. Walterboro is one of the main places in the whole world for producing flower food, which is a, That's cool. kind of a funny thing, but yeah, they do it there. And, and we know there's, there's three main things you want to put in flower food, and the, the main ingredient is actually just sugar. All right. And, and sugar serves as a source of food for the, to keep the flower alive. When the plant's outside, it's, doing, it's creating its own sugars with photosynthesis from the light. But when you bring it inside, it can no longer do that, so we're kind of force-feeding it some sugar through the, the base okay. solution. The second compound that we put in there is an antibicrobial product, and it, it inhibits bacterial growth. Because bacteria, um, again, will grow in a solution that has sugar, especially. Sure. And then the bacteria uh, colonate the base of the stem. Oh. And then they plug the stem so that water can't be taken up. Oh. And so what you end up seeing is what we'll call um, bent neck syndrome, oh, the where they just droops. do, they okay. just droop. Okay. And so what you can also do to help prevent that is after you've had flowers for maybe five days and they're still looking pretty good, you can go and recut them again. Okay. Take another inch or two off the bottom because that's where the bacteria will mostly be growing. You get rid of that, put in some clean water, new flower food, put the vase back in, and it'll last longer. Okay, and then the third The third component, component is a, an acidifying agent. Mm -hmm. So usually it's something like citric acid. Right. Um, and so what we're trying to do is lower the pH of the water or the vase solution. And that helps actually uh, uptake water. The plant takes up the water better if the pH is four to five rather than you know, six to seven. And that's specific to a cut flower, that's yeah. not our outdoor plants. Right, right. In, in the field, in soils, sure. we want, you know, six to seven okay. to be the pH, but not in the vase. Well, the first thing I guess you do with an experiment is to have a control. Absolutely. And that's just that's here good I science. Am. <laughs> <laughs> so our control is just clear water. Okay. So put them in there and see how long they last if you do nothing. And you did put a liter in each one. One because liter. Because that's the correct dilution Absolutely. rate. Yep. Okay. And then the second one that we had was um, a penny. And actually, we can see that that one drank a lot of water, almost just about the same as our control, yep. and it's got it's clear and clean looking. Yeah, copper is a good antibacterial compound. All right. Um, so we will actually spray copper compounds on plants to protect them from bacteria. All right. So simply putting a penny in actually does help. All right. Um, and then this one just looks yeah, awful. Does not look good. That's our aspirin treatment. And that's a traditional. Yeah, old a lot of people put, tail, put yeah. aspirin it in there. It looks awful. And, uh, not looking good. You can yeah. see how cloudy the water yeah. is. Um, that's that's what bacteria do. Mm -hmm. It make the water really cloudy, and, and then of course the water uptake's bad, and you see several uh, flowers there with uh, bent necks. And then bleach. The water looks great. Yeah. But the leaves mm, and the nah. yeah. The foliage I, yeah. is not so good. No. The bleach work really well for uh, killing the bacteria. It's clear water, but obviously there's something in there that the plant did not like. Not like at all. And then <laughs> mellow yellow. <laughs> yeah, I, well, the, 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 the recipe is to put Sprite. This is pretty I, I close. Went, I yeah. went to, the, yeah. to the, the vending machine and there was no Sprite, so I got mellow yellow. 
it actually doesn't look so bad. You can see the plants have used a lot of water. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the water level. They have down. some nodding heads. Yeah, so. they're, they're probably not as good as the control. Yeah, I wouldn't think that that, yeah. I mean, I think you'd do better just with the plain just water. Doing nothing. That. And then we've got another one that really oh, yeah. looks like, don't try that yeah, one. Sugar yeah. and vinegar? Sugar and vinegar. Again, Sounds the, I, good. Well, the sugar is good. Vinegar lowers the pH, yeah. but there's nothing to prevent bacterial growth. And you can see the solution is really cloudy. cloudy. The flowers look horrendous. Yep, okay. And then um, we have the flower food and it looks nice. It looks pretty good. I think it's a little bit better than control. I think if we come back in the next few days, you really start to see a difference. So we're going to get a few extra days out of the flower food. I think the flowers are opening up a little bit more nicely in the flower food too. The and you said that's part of what you want is you want them yeah, to you, open. Yeah, well, you want them to open. You want them to stay but shut. But then here, it, yeah. every night, this batch went in the refrigerator. Yes. Nothing in the water. Um, but it went yeah. refrigerator at night. That's, and it the looks that's the Cadillac right there. Yeah. So the ideal thing to do is create a lot of room in your refrigerator, and every night at the end of the day, put them in the fridge. They're nice and cold. They'll, you know, suspend their life, and then in the morning, put them back out on your kitchen table. Yeah. It's a lot of work, and you need a lot of extra space in your fridge, but it. That is certainly the best thing you can do. Well, and if you get in a, a, a contest with your neighbor down the street about whose husband brought her nicer flowers than yours last <laughs> yeah, longer, yeah. Um, it might be nice to have you yours get, last longer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You get 14 days or more if you do that. Amazing, because yeah. they were already a week ago when they got here. Yeah. What incredible flowers. And then you're doing some research. To, these are mostly grown in South America, yeah, Central America. Yeah, most of the roses, we, we import over a billion dollars of cut flowers from South America every year, primarily Colombia and Ecuador. And um, so we've been working with the, the South American growers on how to grow their product better so that when it's delivered, it performs better for our customers. And you've got a refrigerator back in the lab where you've got them sitting in there and you've given them, guess, different treatments. Tell us a little bit about what you're trying to prevent in that case and what you've treated them with. Sure, one of the biggest problems we have uh, with roses is they're very susceptible to gray mold or, be or botrytis, a very common pathogen. And their spores are everywhere all the time. And in humid greenhouses, the spore lands on the, the petal, and then you have uh, the petal will turn brown. Mm -hmm. um, so it affects the flower petal. It affects the, the appearance of the plant. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really hurt the plant or hurt its vase life that much. It just makes it less Who attractive. Wants Who wants petal? a brown petal? Yeah. Exactly. So we're working with the growers to develop treatments to prevent that. So one of the treatments that's looking really good is simply spraying the plants weekly with calcium. And so, you know, just like calcium gives you stronger bones, mm -hmm. it, it reinforces the cells in the petals. And so the, the fungus, ha, you know, it's a little spore, germinates, and it sends out like a little root that goes and- It has to penetrate. It has to penetrate, yeah. and it's feeding on the cells. It's, it's taking all the good stuff out of the cells mm -hmm. to feed it, to survive itself. And by creating stronger cell walls, the fungus doesn't penetrate as well. So the treatments are actually looking really good at this point. And also, I guess since these people have to go in and cut and work around these plants, calcium wouldn't be an exposure risk right. for the workers. Yeah, it's very safe. And so if we can use less fungicide by using more calcium, then uh, that's a win-win for everybody. And then you prevent building fungicide resistance. So when you need yeah. a fungicide, you've got one that works. You're right, absolutely. Well, I want to thank you so much yeah. for seeing to it that um, when these nice, um, when people want to take something to their sweetheart, there's something in the store that's going to be lovely and attractive and um, get them a good steak supper and, um, and a nice kiss goodnight. Yeah, it's been a pleasure and uh, everyone needs to go out and buy some flowers for somebody you love. Thank you so much. Yeah.